We got another episode of From the Soul. Right. So here we got Speaks for Itself, the oh, God man. Box in the Flesh. Man. You know, um, mm. pretty much From the Soul is a little form that mm. we started up. It's a big form. Big form. Yes. <laughs> For people to have a place to speak on whatever they want to speak on right. from the soul. You right. know, it's not about being so formal and professional. Mm. Something slip, something fall, you stutter, we putting it on, good, you know? Good. So it's just natural, relaxing, mm. you know, straight from the soul. So, um, how you how you feel about tonight? Well, first and foremost, appreciate you for coming out. Oh, man. Appreciate y'all working with us. It was awesome, bro. I was I was really impressed with the talent pool tonight, man. Um, first of all, the diversity. And more than anything, the level, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of talent. I was really proud. And the creativity, man. Like, I know how I, uh, I know how it feels to be from a constricted market. Mm -hmm. You know, a place where you don't feel like your talent can be found or listened to. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that we don't understand is we are from the places where people still buy CDs. Right. We're from the places where people still spend money. You know what I'm saying? The only problem is I think in a lot of cases we come, we are the direct descendants of slaves. Like, and we still live in those areas. And most of us still stay in the same neighborhoods that our grandparents did. Still eat the same food. And in a lot of cases, still have the same mentalities. Yeah. So we have a little bit more convincing to do. I told Big Creek that. I was like, bro, the reason why it's hard for us is because we have a bigger responsibility mm -hmm. than people do from the city. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the reason why I enjoy being here. That's the reason why I enjoy loving on folks and having the opportunity to really talk to people, bro. I, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate it, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just getting to the point in my career where I can admit without ego that I have an influence on a great number of people. Yeah. I inspire yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. So, bro, imagine for me if Rakim would've came to Mississippi. Hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Imagine if if... if Although I did have an opportunity to become really good friends, but imagine if Pimp C came to one of my events mm -hmm. and I got an opportunity to be around, whether I got the hook up or whether I was able to give my number or not, right. just to be able to be in a building with somebody who is moving forward that comes from a similar environment right. means the world to me. So it right. was it was really dope and I was honored to be here. That's what's up. So all in all, what well, the reason why we put this together, I mean, I feel like, especially the way things going on in the world and everything, mm -hmm. I feel like we almost in like a new renaissance era. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like artistry is the number one leaders right mm -hmm. now, you know, from, you know, I think the art appreciation is, mm -hmm. is rising up and then the messages in the art of music is rising, you know. Well, I think music, I think music is on its period. Mm. And... So many people, there's something that happened to music that hardly no one talks about. Music became the new hustle. Hmm. And what happened is, is that the, most of the rappers were nerds and people won't admit this. Even though they may have been hard, especially from the generation that I'm from and above, in order for you to be a lyricist, you had to what? No words. Mm -hmm. So whether they came from the hood or not, like they had to be dope with words. Right. So, in a lot of cases, the, the, the lyricists were very intellectual, and then the street dudes wanted what the rappers had, and the rappers wanted what the street dudes had, hmm. which was all the credibility. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, rap became the new place for the streets, and then the streets convinced the audience that the clout was bigger than the talent. Rap is one of the few things that you don't even have to know how to rap. Right. Your beat don't even have to be dope. Who you fucking? Yeah. You know, how many people you didn't kill? How much dope you didn't sold? But can you rap? Right. Like to me, as long as it's something that's really in the hood, I don't give a fuck whether Ice Cube was real or not. He told the story of our fucking people. Mm -hmm. Although I know for a fact that Scarface was the truth, <laughs> I really didn't care. Because he articulated the way that I felt better than anyone else. Yeah. 
If you look at the Bibles, the people who wrote the Bibles were not the people who were out there doing the stuff. They were the ones who were able to articulate what was going on during that time the best. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. And so, like, with me, it, 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 as much as people, I know people that listen to me, bro. Mm -hmm. I know people that really hear the fact because I have such a deep southern draw. Because my beats were so fucking banging, I know people were listening to my artistry, bro. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy was, white people heard me better than black folks did. The uh, Rolling Stones, when Mississippi the album came out, said it was one of the most relevant albums of that year. They picked one line out, and no one black had ever said this. It was a, it was, it was a line on a Mississippi song. It said, I'm from a place where the flag means more than me. Well, the Confederate flag means more than a black person. Mm -hmm. Bruh, that shit was dope. Similar to when Andre said, I asked a little girl what she wanted to be when she grow up. She said, alive. Hmm. He didn't have to say shit else the whole album. I was like, that's it. Right. But that's why it's so important to do what you guys are doing. Create your own audience. Mm -hmm. That's one of the mistakes that I made in my career. I wanted to please the big city so bad mm. that I ran off and left what I had. <laughs> you know, that, that was one thing that Yo Gotti did that I thought was so smart. Yo Gotti concentrated on four states, the places that loved him, and he super served them, <laughs> and slowly started moving himself out. Mm. That was some of the smartest shit, bro. Yeah, that's a uh, beautiful thing I learned from you and, and KRS. Mm. That's two people that I, I got this jewel from the matter of not reaching for what somebody else say is the standard, mm. but focusing on your loyal following. Right. You know, and, and I've been passing that message on to a lot of the artists that I work with. Like, sometimes you feel like you can't reach a certain level or a certain goal and it's so far out of reach. I'm like, nah, but draw back. Let's Let's focus on the small number first. Mm -hmm. Let's get this first little thousand first. Mm -hmm. and that little thousand spend ten dollars each. That's ten thousand. You know, let's let's focus on getting out of the job field, mm -hmm. working for other people, and start to live off the same lifestyle you got. Mm -hmm. Start paying for that with your artistry. Don't worry about getting a mansion. Pay for your your apartment with that artistry right. first. I give you something. That's the next level of that. One of the mistakes that we make is we just give our fans one thing. Mm -hmm. I actually learned this from Cat Williams. If you know you got a thousand loyal fans who are willing to spend a hundred dollars on, mm -hmm. if you gave them five things that were of quality, they would spend 500 with you. Mm -hmm. We spend so much time trying to get, my mentor is one of the richest men in, black men in Atlanta. Hmm. He said, people are looking for a $20 bill and miss a thousand ones. <laughs> That sound real. That's a you fact. That's a fact. So, you know, and I, I, I gotta tell you, man, like, I'm not joking. Our people waking up, bro. Yeah, definitely. Like That stuff with Donald Trump is real. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. I was happy. Like, I see so many people researching and mm -hmm. learning about the rules of the political They're system. They're fucking angry, and I love it, dog. I love it. I love it. Cause Hillary, like you said, that would have been on they on, back in their comfortable chair. Oh, we almost got Obama. He gonna be right behind her and all that. Like this got people like, what do we need to do? What now, can we do right now? Right now, and that's what it's supposed. I, I don't care who was in office. That's the mentality what we should have had. But the fact that it came through Donald Trump, however it gotta happen, I'm glad it's happening. But the other thing is too, bro, is that the, what people don't understand, man, is Donald Trump is a theory dog the clinton family is partly responsible have a big big part to do with over six thousand black men being in jail bro. Hmm. you know and they said they were sorry about it but never had a plan to like dude that is a whole